Hello YouTube, Charles coming at you here with another update. I'm going to try and keep this one brief. I've noticed I've had a tendency to just ramble on and on and say the same things multiple times and say um when I'm thinking. So I'm going to try and do this quickly without saying um to be as professional as possible. As you can tell, today is the 28th of February, the second to last day, although February normally has 28 days. But what makes today, what makes this year special, not only is it a leap year, but on today, I received my replacement SP-101 from Ruger, specifically the uh, three-inch barreled Wiley Clap Edition, which is a very fine gun. This is not the first time I've purchased one. As you can see here, I purchased one in late December. It arrived early January. And when I took possession of it, I was less than pleased. It had a number of issues, uh, both cosmetic and uh, functional concerns that uh, I had worries about. I took it to the range once, as many of you know, shot it once in the midst of a course of fire when I had handed it off to a friend, the rear sight was ejected. Anyways, let's not talk about my old one. Let's go ahead and unpack this new one and see how it compares. Opening it for the first time, we have some paperwork here. And there it is, the Wiley Clap SP-101 new in box and wrapping. What a fine looking gun. By the way, <laughs> just to, I'm not just talking here. I do have the original grip from the original gun and the, I don't know what you call this, this little poker chip, right? And as you can see here, this one, this is the standard grip that comes with the gun. Um, I attached, I took this off, as you can, as you can plainly tell, and I attached a aftermarket Hogue grip to my old SP-101. Um, and when I sent that into the factory, I asked they would send it back. And they are doing so, but it's in a separate package that will arrive at my house this coming Friday. So I will be taking this off to attach um, the, Hogue, uh, the aftermarket Hogue grip, and I'll probably get some aftermarket wood grips because they look absolutely fine. Anyways... Let's take a look at this fine revolver, this being the second such example. No scratch marks, no handling marks. Better be so, because this is a brand stinking new gun. My old one was also brand stinking new, as you can see there. Um, they changed it so that the billboard is no longer on the right, on the left side of the gun here, just ugly as all heck. They changed it so that the warnings read the instruction manual, Ruger, Newport, New Hampshire, USA, to the underside of the barrel, which I think makes inherently good sense. My old SP-101 had these nasty scrape marks fore and aft of the dove, of the front side dovetail here. That's obviously because the uh, whoever attached the front sight to the gun just smashed in there and it scraped the side and it was just ugly as all heck and it left two mighty large scrape marks there um many of you also know that my original sp101 had an overclocked or underclocked barrel i think it was higher on the right than the left so that the front sight was canted to the left and this one let me bring it close to my eye is clocked properly so that is how it ought to look um let's see let's open the cylinder up and let's get rid of that little poker chip and you can see oh wow look at that so my when my original gun showed up it was bone dry it was dry as death valley i don't know if you can see from back here there's a lot of lube on the back of this there's probably lube on the back of this as well. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there's a fair amount of lube. And it's also on the face of the, um, I don't know what you call this, the gas shield. Anyways, you could also see, interesting, it looks like this revolver already had some work done on it. Because you can see it's already started to wear here where the back of the ejector star here, this little nub, rubs against the back of the, uh, the this face here. Um, and there's a little bit of lube as well on the bottom of the, uh, the frame here. I can tell, whew, I can tell that this revolver will also need some, um, deburring, dehorning. Um, this edge here is extremely sharp. And although this side here is a little bit rounded off, it looks like somebody took a little bit of time here, this edge really is what you need to watch out for. On my original SP-101, I was doing the Mossad Ayub stress reload for the first time, smashing 
my hand down on top of the ejector here, the ejector rod. And in doing so, not realizing that this little corner here was super sharp, I cut my hand open, which um, obviously was unideal. This ejector rod feels eh, about as smooth as the old one. Um, you, the other thing you have to watch out for on the SP-101 is that you don't eject this and then try and close the cylinder because um, I did scratch just a little bit, not here, but on my old one before I realized my lesson. All right. Uh, cosmetically, the gun looks good, as I mentioned. Um, these grips I, are all right for me. Um, oh, that trigger. Okay, so this trigger was a, is a lot smoother than my old SP-101. On my old SP-101, not only was the trigger heavy, the trigger also dragged along the left side here of the hammer cutout of the frame. This one, excuse me. This one here is also biased slightly to the left, but I don't feel it rubbing against the side, the intern, the, the inside cut here. Yeah, I don't feel it rubbing up against that. And also notice when I did my double, when I did the double action, I don't know if you guys can hear it. On my old SP-101, upon releasing the trigger, it would audibly squeak. I'm not just talking metal on metal. I'm not talking about, like, you know, rough feeling triggers. I'm talking it actually squeaked. So, so let's see if it does that. A little bit there. Well, this trigger is much smoother by at least 15 to 20% compared to my old one, just by my, my own memory. Oh, you, saw, you heard it squeak there a little bit. And it also had this really annoying squeak, yeah, like that. Okay, that, it, it showed up twice there. I'm guessing that's because the trigger needs a little bit of work, maybe a little bit of polishing. And I will be, absolutely, I will be doing quite a bit of work. You can see the original hoe grip that is being sent back to me. Got some um, reduced power springs and also uh, the M Carbo polishing kit, All right? I'll be working on this with a close childhood friend of mine and also some shims for the hammer and shims for the trigger so that uh, we can bring down the, uh, we can smooth out that double action trigger pull, and hopefully maybe get rid of that squeaking sound. Although let's be honest, if you're touching off 357 Magnum, you're not gonna hear it. Overall, I'm very pleased with the aesthetic appearance of this gun. Again, I'll be replacing the grip and I'll be doing a lot of work on the internals. Um, I've got some snap caps here, some five rounders. Let's see if they work. Yep, they slide right in there. And I would estimate this this double action trigger. It's a bit awkward doing this behind the camera. Somewhere around 12, 13, 14 pounds, I think. I think with some polishing, you'll probably lose a pound or two off that. And then with the reduced power trigger, uh, trigger springs and hammer springs and whatnot, I think you could probably get this down to about eight pounds. And then, of course, revolvers, as I mentioned in my other update video, they are an absolute tactile joy to handle. Ooh, bumping the tripod there. This one, I've noticed, one of these has a, a, a cylinder where it just binds up. So I need to mark that one. Single action, probably about three and a half pounds, I think. Not four, but it's not super low either. Absolutely. If you had to take a 25-yard confidence shot, I think you could do it with the single action here. And I've got one more. I've actually got more Safari Land speed loaders. I just don't have enough snap caps. Right? And then open sesame. Uh, and I, obviously I've started to develop just a little bit of a turn line, but again, you guys know that this revolver is literally brand new. I opened it in front of you, right? Masada Ayub stress reload. 
then you're good. Overall, I'm very pleased with this purchase. Hopefully when I take it to the range, it will not eject the rear sight anymore. It will hit to point of aim. Um, and again, I can't wait to, uh, there I go saying, um, again, I can't wait to shoot this, uh, do some, I can't wait to work on the internals of this gun to really smoothen it out even further. This one's a lot smoother than my old one already, but I'd like to make it even smoother, a little bit easier to handle. And I'll be talking more about why I chose to get into revolvers. And you can see there's even some lube on the inside of the trigger there. So again, I think somebody clearly at the factory worked on this. It did take them three days, three weeks, excuse me. It took them three weeks and one day to get from beginning to end. Normally when I looked online, uh, when people had to replace their GP100s or their you know vanilla SP101s, uh, they would get turned around in two or three days, either for repair or to be sent uh, a new example to be sent to the customer. But the Wiley clap is made only on a limited basis, so it took them three weeks to, you know, send their little slave elves into orbit to mine the steel ore from the asteroid belt, bring it back, forge it, you know, investment cast steel, whatever this is called. And so it took them a little bit longer. Overall, I'm very pleased. I'm still wondering out loud if the smart decision for getting a hand cannon was to go with a Glock 10 millimeter, but I will explain in a future video why the SP-101 was my choice and why I decided to get into revolvers to begin with. This is already now nearly 12 minutes long. You can see now that I've got my SP-101 back from Ruger, and I wish you all a great rest of the day. I will be releasing a future video soon.